the question is, can you kind of have your cake and eat it too? That is, can we have um, innovation, uh, wealth creation? Can we have all these marvelous ideas of technology and um, expand them and do all these marvelous things without growth? Like the end of all global orders, you don't quite, you can't put a date on it. You can put a date on the beginning, that's easy. When it ends, we don't know, but what we know for sure is that the basic underpinnings of that global order have come apart. Uh, so you've got increasingly a nation-based system and a system that, of economics that is increasingly globalized. Those two things don't go together. We don't have, and we haven't evolved, the capacity to manage a globalized economy because everything we know about politicians, about voters, so don't blame the politicians, about voters, is that they like the nation state. They keep on reinforcing the fundamental strength of the nation state. We're in an unstable system in, in your terms. We don't know where it's going. We know that we can't go backwards. We know it's got to change. And there is, at the moment, no possibility of thinking through a new system because the people who are doing the thinking, again, are embedded in that nation state. Watch how the banks are behaving. The banks are beginning to behave as though they understand that the world that they've known is beginning to come apart. Citibank, for example, just announced they're starting to close uh, retail banking all over the world, very slowly. Uh, you've just had the Americans slap enormous fines on all the big European banks, and it's only the first round of it. Uh, you will see the, the banking, lead, banking world headquarters start to leave the United States uh, for all sorts of reasons, uh, migrating to other places. You see the Chinese doing a big energy deal with the Russians, and that deal, if it ever closes, will entirely not go through dollars. If you are the reserve currency, the dollar, and we all live in a dollar world, as you begin taking big chunks out, so you, all the bilateral trade between Argentina and China is done not through the dollar. Uh, they're systematically beginning to try to peck away at things. So I think business is only barely aware, and, and that's understandable. Who benefited most from this period? Global business. It's been a magnificent period that, that performed for them and their shareholders extremely well. They are the most in, embedded in it, and they're the last ones to figure it out. Yes, we are living in an era of crisis. But is it different from what we've seen before? Globalization. Have we just come to realize that it's a problem? No. We knew from the very, very beginning that there was an inherent conflict between the national and the super globalized. We knew that. We knew that inevitably, at some point, globalization would force national democratic governments to put at risk the social advantages of their own people, something that wasn't going to happen. We knew that. Uh, were we, why were we surprised about what happened in Russia with Ukraine? I don't know why. We've seen this recently. There were massive shifts in the borders in the Balkan region in the 1980s. We've seen that before. Ebola. Why are we surprised by Ebola? This is the fifth, if I'm not mistaken, outbreak of Ebola that we have seen. So all these things, I think, we have seen before. The problem is that we are looking at them in a way which, to my mind, is very dangerous. And here I would come to a term that is called meliorism, which simply means that we have come to believe that human societies and human civilization can keep progressing in such a way that will eliminate the destructive tendencies within humanity. And that any problem we see is a problem of defective institutions. Okay, that's what we have come the way we've come to look at things. And this is very, very dangerous, and I will explain why. So when we see Ebola, our first reaction is that the way these countries are operating is so defective, so corrupt, that it's their problem. Well, it's not our, their problem. We live in a global world, and it's our problem as well. This is a major, major mistake, major mistake. We keep believing so much in progress, so much in innovation, so much in technology that we keep fooling ourselves that we can get out of any problem that would appear in front of us. 
And I believe that that's a very, very big and a very dangerous fallacy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.